So, Ms. Hall, thank you so much for joining us here on The Point. Now, I understand that you have been also always very passionate about women empowerment. The Hong Kong Federation of Women was established in 1993 and uh, it has launched uh, several first of its kind initiatives and this time we have the Women Power Forum, also the very first time not just in Hong Kong but all over China. Why do you want to organize such an event? What's the theme and why now? Indeed, because um, the organization uh, Women Federation has already been established for over 25 years. I'm very lucky that I have taken over the reign as now the chair lady um, from somebody who I count as my mentor and a very influential lady who is now in her 90s who founded the organization uh, some 25 years ago along with some of Hong Kong's brightest and you know really most powerful women leaders. Uh, Mrs. Peggy Lam herself, who had been in the past a um, very strong social uh, leader and afterwards she has also been one of the early politicians who had joined the uh, district council and to date even she has a lot of people who looked up to her. I think it is important first of all to continue the very good tradition of respecting our you know, women seniors who have been in fact uh, important in shaping and in helping Hong Kong grow to where it is today, uh, especially in terms of um, empowering women and then giving women the opportunities mm -hmm. now we enjoy. Um, for me, um, I am of course also very blessed to uh, have been able to live my dreams, uh, becoming a major businesswoman in Hong Kong um, following my own family's um, fortunes and my father's footsteps, um, we want to tell people that all these opportunities do not just come easily. It still needs and requires all of us to really work together um, and have the trust in each other and, and respect each other's um, accomplishments and also learn from each other. Mm -hmm. So that's why we want to bring together people from all over the world to share their stories and their experiences to enlighten and to also give us you know a glimpse of you know how exactly people live in different parts of the world well i see hong kong is already a very gender balanced city i mean we see business people like you yourself we see the uh, chief executive being a woman we see many many women leader already why do you think hong kong still needs that or why do you think china needs that at this and at this particular moment we all now have enjoyed the capability of granting women equal opportunities equal education um, there's a in, in Hong Kong in particular we are in fact uh, eroded as one of the most successful um, and and the place where we have the most freedom and and women definitely as you can see in terms of ratios and uh, their own career developments um, and high education uh, all goes to prove that women especially you know uh, all sorts of uh, provisions have been looked into and well prepared but we still need to basically have a chance to understand other people's you know developments in order to appreciate you know our own we're part of China we need to learn about what's going on in China we want to establish so that in the future I believe now that we are becoming part of the Greater Bay Area Hong Kong is one of mm -hmm. the 11 cities in fact Hong Kong should and wants to be um, in a way in a, in a, in a leadership position uh, or at least in a position to be a core city that's why we need to be working alongside and to be in fact maybe even um, sharing and shedding some light on how women can work together in achieving that as well. Yeah. Well, at this moment, we all know that the, what has been in the news for uh, almost uh, eight weeks now. Um, what do you think this kind of discussion about women empowerment can bring to help heal the divide that has been tearing the city apart? Right now, I think what is happening is sometimes with all the frustrations or maybe to a certain extent you know um, there is not even a clarity as to how uh, things are going to exactly you know 
being mapped out. Uh, we need to have some sort of solidarity about our identity and also about you know, the capabilities of you know, how we can all work together, some framework, some ideas. Um, we need to get to come across from you know, where we have uh, simply just frustrations or mistrust into being able to actually break through all these barriers and to find, in fact, the impetus, the necessary um, capability of basically um, some sort of a game plan. Bringing together uh, women from different parts of the world, including even from uh, China, especially from the Greater Bay Area. We want to actually constructively have a dialogue. Uh, people need to see each other. You know, today I keep saying, you know, we are uh, of the past generation. I mean, I'm older than you. Um, in the past, I, I kept telling the younger people, when we went to school, and if you need to learn anything, it's, un it's entirely your own initiative because you go to a library. Nobody will teach you how to go find you know, the information that you need. You need to even do enough thinking prior to entering the library in order to exactly know which aisle you are going to go down in order to find that book mm -hmm. where you might or might not you know, eventually get the information that you need in order to complete your homework or to write your essay. Yeah. Today, you can do it in minutes, you can basically you know, go on the internet and even without any prior knowledge of anything, you simply can ask a question, you pop a question and somehow somebody will continue feeding you information. But beware that therefore people are taking over your work. In my opinion, we don't allow other people to just feed us with information that we cannot ourselves verify, that we don't know for a fact whether those are important or information that are actually constructed. It is upon yourself that you need to make that determination. Are you implying that this is partially, at least partially, the reason why the city is experiencing what we are seeing today, especially that so many youths have gone to extreme to use violence, vandalism, to try to achieve their goals? Well, I'm saying that people should actually open up their mindset and try to listen and see also if there are differences and this city permits differences in opinion, differences even in expression. But before we do that, we should also try to understand and appreciate other people's views and perspectives. Mm -hmm. So I would say um, in, we have learned a lesson and we must um, now go in to basically start another process of trying to build understanding. We need to permit everyone to have a chance to express our views and we probably will need to um, review also even the whole possibility of letting people go back to some of the basic uh, appreciation about um, our, our own traditions um, and our own identity and I think a lot of work has to be done there. Any concrete examples in the last part that you just mentioned, uh, uh, going back to our own traditions, our own cultures and identities? Well, people are all yearning always for what's new. Today, I've invited some, in my opinion, you know, really world leaders in um, all the different aspects of um, uh, the, the global development, including, of course, arts and culture. We would listen to, you know, a, a major force now today in, in today's world in driving modern and contemporary art development. Mm -hmm. But I'm quite sure that when we listen to, you know, these discussions, more often than not, they will be talking about the excitement of the new, but there will always be, obviously, the importance of continuing to uphold the heritage our cultures and the passing on of the know-how and the respect to our uh, forefathers who had brought many things to us. Um, I believe this has been in a way uh, left out of our uh, system both in terms of 
uh, the education system as well as in having more um, interactive and profound uh, ways of stimulating our young generation. That's what I'm trying to also establish through the setting up of the forum. One last question, really briefly. Now that I come to Hong Kong, I see the other side of what I don't see while I was on the mainland reading the news, only the very dark and unpleasant images.